up in the other one every time. I just do. <laughs> yeah, All right. I send the same link to you that I send to everybody else. Yeah, my iPad, it works fine. For some reason on my laptop, it does not. Okay. All right. Well, I've got 531. So uh, at this moment, I'd like to call our uh, meeting to order for this evening for the Kitsap Public Facilities District. Um, I'd like to start the meeting by uh, asking a question for each of us to respond to. Uh, we are all in the middle of March Madness right now, and what a March Madness it has been. And so my question that I want to pose to all of you is, what is your favorite sporting event? If you're going to pick one sporting event to uh, be there in person or to watch, what what is it? What sporting event would you pick? I'll go. Uh, I'm a Notre Dame alum uh, for law school, so I say Notre Dame football games at at the at the stadium. It's a great great atmosphere, a lot of fun, a lot of history, and yeah, just a good time. All right. Any particular opponent? Oh, well, I mean, there's so many that, you know, are supposedly our rivals. Uh, beating Michigan or Ohio State or USC are always the top ones. All How right. Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> you just stepped on toes, Phil. You just stepped on toes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Well, I'll follow uh, Phil, my, mine would also be football, and being a Navy graduate, it would be the Army Navy game. Yeah. All right. Preferably a year in, in which Navy wins. <laughs> and of course, Navy is leading in the series. Do you know what the current count is? Uh, it, st it started in 1890, so however many games that is. Uh, they missed, I think, one in World War II, uh, and Na Navy is about 10 ahead. It's like All right. 60, 50, and five ties or something like that. By the way, I see John is in uh, the attendance in there. We can move him over. Thank you, Phil. Sure. All right. Who else? <laughs> I'll go. I'm a New England girl, so I grew up on the Boston Bruins. Um, um, and so uh, I'm really excited about the Kraken. So Sweet. not something, yeah, I'm ready. I got my hat, I got my t-shirt, I'm all ready. Uh, <laughs> uh, the commercial, when they were starting to do the reveal and they've got the uh, fisherman out there with his daughter and his <laughs> son, do you remember that? No, uh-uh. Okay, so anyway, when they were promoting it, but those were friends of ours. So that was pretty neat to see. I don't know how they got selected to do that, but it was cool to see faces of friends on, on the promo stuff. Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot of fun around here. All right. Who's next, John, if you didn't hear it, my, my question is in the midst of March madness, you know, uh, what's your favorite sporting event to watch or, or be at? Oh, that's so tough. I mean, I'm a big Sounders fan, but uh, I didn't get the chance today because I was in transit most of the day, but uh, my Creighton Blue Jays apparently won, uh, yeah. moving on to the next round. So, Wow. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it could be tough. It's, uh, they're going to play Gonzaga next, so <laughs> there's that. All right. I can go next. I'm actually not much of a pro sports fan. I like college football. But there's no games out there I'd really pick over the other ones. So that's about it. Not like uh, Alabama versus LSU? Well, I'm more of a Husky fan, and I don't see them being number one for a long time or even in the contention. Uh, right. Yeah, but I, I do like anyone other than Alabama, though. I'm tired of them. <laughs> All right. Tom? I'm going to pick the uh, NCAA Frozen Four, which is the equivalent of the March Madness in uh, college ice hockey. Did you play hockey or why the love for hockey? I did play it as a, as a team through high school I played. 
And that was out in Maine, correct? Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was uh, 6'3", 6'4", 225, and went to the first church I ever served out in New Hampshire. And they had a hockey team, and they thought, this guy's from Minnesota. We drafted a ringer. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I broke it to them that I've never really put on skates, never played hockey in my life, that I love basketball. So that was a great disappointment to all of them. Uh, so that leads into my answer for sure would be March Madness. I love this time. Um, I love watching the games with that much passion and players playing that hard. And it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Mike or Brian? Go ahead, Brian. Unmute. You're muted. I'll go ahead. Um, my biggest sport is the Olympics. I go crazy during the Olympics, but that only happens every four years. So second is March Madness. I always have a bracket or five or six, and I'm tracking everything everywhere. Um and of course, I'm everything Stanford. Uh, they didn't make the, the big dance this year, but the women did. They're ranked number, well, they're a, a number one seed. And right now they, they're cleaning house on anybody they play. So we'll see how they get uh, in the final four. And the Pac-12 is rolling. So yeah, they're doing they, great. They doing are good. rolling. So we'll see if USC continues it against Kansas in a little yeah. bit. Brian? Yes, I'm unmuted. Thank you. Um, I'm a big soccer junkie. So uh, Sounders, uh, I've had season tickets since 2009. And um, I go to as many games as I can. And, you know, I always want to go to a World Cup. So I'm looking forward to, what is it, 2026 or something when it comes to North America. Awesome. All right. Well, with that, uh, thanks for indulging me with that. Uh, approval of minutes. Can I get a motion to approve our two sets of minutes? Uh, we'll do one at a time. First, our February 22nd. A I'll motion to-, to approve the minutes as presented with the uh, corrections made as noted in the email I sent back to the group. Thank you. I'll second. All right. Any discussion on that? Okay, let's take a vote then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right. And uh, per the amendments that you had put in your email, we'll make sure that we make note of that. Uh, Second, um, the minutes uh, from our special meeting on March 10th. Uh, Can I have a motion for that? Move approval of the uh, meeting, uh, the minutes of the special meeting on the 10th of March. All right, second. I'll second it. Thank you, Walt. Thank you, Pat. And then any discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, uh, nay. I'm going to abstain just because I wasn't at the meeting. Yep. Noted. All right. Um, Both of our uh, meetings have uh, uh, passed um, on approval. And now we'd like to do public comment. Um, If there is someone in the attendees who would uh, like to make any kind of public comment, uh, we reserve this time in the meeting to hear from you. Uh, we give three minutes. And so if there is anybody, if you would uh, put your hand up um, virtually uh, with the little button, uh, just hit the raise hand. Or in the Q&A, you can uh, put a question in there too to notify us somehow that you would like to make a public comment.
Mike, are you seeing? I do not see any raised hands, but maybe you do. And you're muted, Mike, so I can't hear you. I don't see any uh, anybody in the panelist area. I don't see any Q and A, and I don't see any raised hands. All right. Well, then uh, I see that you brought uh, Carla in, and we'll move on to item number four in our agenda for the regional project status report. And the Paulsbo perk is up for uh, tonight. So welcome, Carla. Thank you. Uh, for coming and letting us know what's happening with the perk. Oh, is, thank you. Is, is Dan with your group, Carla? He is. If you wouldn't mind bringing him in. Uh, I will do be... so. Great. Thank you. Well, board, um, Mike and Brian, so happy to be with you guys this afternoon. Thank you for inviting us to continue to update you on the progress that we're making um, with your support and partnership on the PERC feasibility study. I, we do have a short PowerPoint presentation that just gives you the highlights of the work that we've done since the last time we've reported to you. If that is uh, okay, Darren, to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, let, I got I it. I clicked too fast, Mike. You'll have to let me, enable me to do it and then let me know and then I'll share. But I also, I'll take this time to introduce Dan Schoonmaker, who is the, our, the City of Palsbo's new Parks and Recreation Director. He followed us in the footsteps of Mary McCluskey, as you know, he's our new director. And um, Dan, why don't you say, give a hi while I share my screen. <laughs> yes, good evening, everybody. It's good to uh, make this presentation tonight. And uh, I realize I got big shoes to fill following Mary McCluskey, and I'll do my best to uh, do that. And uh, if I could also address uh, your, your question earlier, Darren, it would definitely be a North Kitsap Viking football game. <laughs> Dan uh, also serves as the quarterback coach, and you might have read a few articles about Colton Bauer. Uh, so he's doing a good job at that, uh, at that job. Thank you. Okay, so I just wanted to check to see, does everyone see the screen? Yes. Yeah. And is it a split screen or do you just see the see the main PowerPoint? We uh, see one see picture a with screen. a next slide. All right. That's what I was afraid of. I was quickly trying to figure out how I might fix that, but I apologize for that because I, I don't want to spend your time on logistics, but I'll go ahead and kick us off. Um, we are here um, to give our quarterly report to the PFD board on um, the work that we've been doing. Tonight, we'll be speaking on what we have done since December up until uh, this month, up, uh, up until today, in fact, we'll, we have some news to report today. We'll go over the community survey results that we had our community survey the last time we reported to you, which was in October, we had just opened our survey. So we'll be able to share with you the results of that community survey. We've had our stakeholder steering committee kickoff meeting in January. So we'll give you an update on that. Our market analysis report is well underway. We'll give you a, a update on how that's going. This weekend, we'll, or this Saturday, and then a following Tuesday, we're having a live Zoom community chats, continuing to engage with the community on their preferences. And then our site concept and space planning consultant selection process. So to the community survey results, uh, as I mentioned, we had it open for 30 days. A little, actually, it may be a little over 30 days in the fall. We had over 15,000 uh, contacts or touches on our various emails, our social media. We had 1,300 survey responses, full, full uh, survey responses. Hundreds, we have a 500 member email list now that came out of the survey responses and 82% of our responders were from Paul's Bow and then 10% were from uh, the outlying areas of, in North Kitsap. So here's what the survey told us. These are the top priorities that identified for our three thing, the three uh, activities that we were testing or, or I should say surveying 
Uh, indoor recreation was aquatics, cardio, fitness, yoga, Pilates were the top activities. Here's our key takeaway from the survey results for that. Uh, the community desires a place to go during our cold and rainy weather, a multi-use facility, of course, which you know we're already planning for, and don't duplicate existing offerings in the community. Uh, our, our outdoor recreation, we had walking and running trails as a top um, priority, soccer and ultimate frisbee were the top outdoor recreation preferences. And uh, key takeaways under that element, uh, lighted sports fields, which of course we already knew too, or that's what we're planning for, and trails that connect with um, Paul, uh, the Greater Paulsbo Trail Network. And for events, uh, a strong, a real strong showing for performing arts, and then lectures, multi-day events, conferences, and weddings. Our key takeaway for this, which which. We, uh, we agree with is that the community needs spaces for groups to gather, training, social events, classes, and lectures. And of course, as you'll recall, uh, the event space is, a, is kind of the cornerstone piece of the perk. So here's our overall takeaways for our community survey. There was strong community preferences for indoor and outdoor rec uses. We had strong sentiment not to duplicate programs and services that are already offered in the community by the private sector or perhaps um, in the public sector, in a different community, perhaps. Uh, good news for us, 74% of those, those, and of course we understand that this is self-elected survey takers, 74% of them are supportive of a, ba a ballot measure to help fund the construction costs. And we got a really good strong volunteerism, uh, folks who said they would be willing to volunteer and to continue to participate in the, in the community engagement portion of the perk. So. All really positive indicators, uh, great, great, uh, great feedback on checking in with some of the uses that we had uh, assumed and programmed for the perk. And so we're excited to continue to talk to the community um, in narrowing down their, their, the big list of preferences down to uh, the next level. And in tandem with our out complete outreach to the community, we've also uh, We've also gathered together a perk steering committee of 30 community leaders and it's staffed by eight city staff members. These are meeting, uh, this committee is gonna have um, meetings like every other month as we're working through the feasibility study. They will also participate in smaller working groups organized around the tasks that are identified in the ILA that we have with the PFD. And those are the market analysis, the draft management plan, the site concept plan, and the financials. So each one of those four elements, which are the elements of the ILA, which build the, the uh, feasibility study, we have a working group, a steering committee working group that has committed to working with the city staff in development of that portion of the feasibility study. These are heavy hitters in the community. We have a lot of technical expertise and a lot of uh, in, uh, community um, influencers. So we're very thankful that they've agreed to volunteer their time to, to the, city <laughs> the city and the city staff as we're working on these four components of the, of the feasibility study. We had our kickoff meeting on January 28th and where we did, what we did is we did present the community survey results much more in depth than what I just gave to you. Uh, and we asked for feedback on that from them. And then we organized into work groups. And I just want to take this moment to thank both Mike and Darren who did attend our steering committee kickoff meeting. So thank you for your time um, with us at that meeting and more, as you know, more to come. Here's our key messages that we heard from our steering committee at that first meeting. Um, definitely, confirmation that Paulsbo needs a meeting space that can attract users to multi-day events. Uh, we want to be cognizant of avoid shifting revenues from other regional needs. That is more to the city's part of a, of a bond measure. That was a comment related to that. Uh, the, a lot of comments about how we market the facility, how we maximize the hours of operation to get it the fullest extent. Of, 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 the, of the rental uses of the event center. 
We need to convince the community of the economic benefit of the perk. That, as you know, that's an important component of it. It's a, it's a requirement of your, you know, the funding piece that you guys bring to, to this project. And we need to uh, kind of continue to work with the school district on the blending of the uses between the the existing facilities up at uh, at the the North Kitsap. Um, school campus, meaning the performance arts center and the pool to perhaps to the park. So more conversations with between the city and the school district on those uses. The market analysis, we have hired a uh, consultant, Burke, uh, Burke Consulting, and they have a, our, a specialist arm for market studies for recreational facilities. So we were very excited to have them be able to join our PERC team. What they've done is they've done their first phase of their market analysis, which is a demographic assessment of our anticipated catchment area. They've done research on the national and regional recreation trends. They, we gave them a list of, of similar facilities in the Kitsap County and the region as well as statewide for event centers, recreation centers, recreation centers with pools, kind of taking a look at all the different facilities and having them give a review of them. We have a list of potential user groups that are in Paulsville and in North Kitsap. They interviewed all of them. I think there was eight. So they did eight, uh, spoke to eight user groups. And this is like the um, North Kitsap Soccer Club. And this is the, the, uh, the Paulsville Piranhas and the North Kitsap Little League. So those types of user groups uh, had interviews with them. The Birkin Associates also interviewed steering committee members that had relevant and specific expertise in this way. We have a number of steering committee members that have actual specialization in sports events and management that were able to bring a real uh, valuable, relevant experience to the table. We also have a retired parks and recreation director that's gone through a similar study or a similar process for an event center in their community. So we have some, some depth of knowledge on our steering committee that were, was leveraged into the market analysis. And then we had our first market analysis work group meeting, which was last Tuesday, and, and Mike Walton was able to jump in and, and participate or at least listen to that. So thanks again, Mike, for joining us. And uh, those findings for the interview portion of the study was presented to the work group. Here's our key takeaways from the, the first phase of the market analysis, as well as the discussion with the, the market analysis work group last week. There's very strong interest in the perk, a lot of excitement in the community and in the, the arts, the sports and arts community for the perk. Uh, community members are excited for this feasibility. So here, the third bullet was really important, and this is this is where we're at today. The perk's not going to be able to be everything for everyone. We need to know what facility it's going to be and focus on that. And I just want to note for you all that we also are very we're keenly aware of that because it must it must fit the PFD component of what it needs to be, which is a sales tax generating a leverage and an economic uplift. So we're keenly aware of that. We want to be a destination facility. That's that is what we want to be, and we need to invest therefore in specific facility components and be the best at that, rather than spending too thin across all areas or all uses. So again, that was a huge comment from our consultant and reiterated by our, our working group. Uh, swimming pools are very expensive to operate, um, probably not too big news for most of you, uh, but that's something that we definitely will need to manage uh, that because that was a very high desire in our community survey. And invest well to become a destination facility. Sorry for the typo there. So moving on to what we have going on this week in, in our continuing with our community engagement, this will be our last big significant community engagement outreach piece in, until we have some alternatives to present to the community. We'll, we have an online open house going right now. It started on March 1st. It will go to the end of the month. We have two Zoom community chats, one scheduled for this Saturday, March 27th in the morning, and then Tuesday, next Tuesday, uh, from 5 to 6 30 in the evening all the information is on our web page and this is just to jump in and give an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one to the perk team there'll be a number of staff that will be online 
Uh, there's also on the online open house, there's a short questionnaire that's follow up questions to the survey results, as well as a more a very extensive uh, public co or comment form if people want to continue to give us comments um, uh, in a written format. So kind of hitting them in all ways, short questionnaire, comment form and live live Zoom chat. So looking ahead, we have, uh, like I said, we're gonna have our, our com continue our community engagement. We're, once the community chats conclude, we're gonna consolidate preferences. We'll be continuing to work with our steering committee working groups to narrow those down. We'll be working with our market analysis to uh, start assigning uh, alternatives and financials to those alternatives. And we will be selecting, and in fact, we did just today select an architectural firm. We will be working to get them under contract, and then they will work in tandem with our market, um, our market study consultant, as well as with the team to start doing some preliminary site designs and, and use space analysis for the building. And that will be uh, what we'll be working on the next couple of months. And we'll be working with the steering committee working group. So we may not be uh, doing as much community outreach because we're gonna do some of this work. And then in this, probably in the summer, beginning of early summer, we'll have, some, we'll have some alternatives for the community to take a look at. And that will be perfect timing because that's when we'll come back to you guys in June and we'll be able to tell you tell you where we're at with our alternative analysis. So just to uh, give you a reminder of the timeline we're working under, as you know, the our approach to the PERC was to follow a phased approach, which was the, uh, uh, the PFD's recommended um, approach for a new project. So phase one, we're in feasibility. That's where we're still at. So we're, we're here. Uh, we still plan to conclude our feasibility study this year, and we'll be able to move forward with a with a request to the PFD board once we have a uh, have a finalized alternative that uh, we have worked through the feasibility study as well as the community process and, and as you know the community must support this uh, because that's part of the city's funding strategy for our 50 percent of the construction of the building. Uh, the rest of the phase two is design and development which we anticipate to begin in 2022 uh, moving and then um, continuing here, you can just read that you've seen this timeline before we presented this to you before with the hope and that will be in phase three construction in 2025, 2026. So uh, that is our update and I will um, shop, stop sharing my screen and Dan and I are happy to answer any questions that you may have on our progress. Thank you uh, so much, Carla, for that report. Uh, Board members, any questions? I, Phil. I have a question. Yeah, Carla, uh, thanks for that. That was actually really informative. I'm, I'm John and I are the two uh, newbies on the on the committee, so I think getting getting that was really good. Yeah, one question you. I have been having of this one, and you know, frankly, any of the projects that are having community center elements, kind of looking at that uh, timeline on that second to last uh, slide there. Are you going to be still doing more community outreach and I guess feasibility maybe into 2022, 2023? The reason I ask that is with COVID, I mean, what people say today, you know, about what they're going to want from a community center, what they're going to expect. I mean, that's us trying to remember what we used to do and then project what we might want to do in the future. And then maybe when we reopen, we see that, you know, maybe due to technology like Zoom, Half the meetings that people previously used to go to, you know, they may say, I don't need to do that. I mean, it's fun getting together in person, but maybe we'll do that more like this. And instead, we want to focus on, I don't know, whatever the new community thing is in the future. So I'm just kind of wondering, once you move away from the community outreach section into the design feasibility, are you guys still going to be doing the community outreach, which their opinion today may change in a year once we kind of hopefully reopen a little more and then that may shift things. I just kind of want to, you know, at least keep that, you know, in the back of everyone's minds. Yeah, no, I really appreciate that comment actually. And, and it's something that we have talked about. Um, I, I wouldn't say that we have a full, 
full answer to it, but I think, but I like what you're saying. Like you need to be aware that, that things might change in a year uh, or two and community engagement and, and, and making sure we're connected with the North Kitsap community is an important part of the perk. They're, they're partners in this just as much as you guys are. And we're, you know, we want to, we, we want to be uh, absolutely uh, communicating with all of our partners. And so I do believe that we'll have to continue to communicate with the, with the, our, our community and our email list that we have super excited about as big as it is. And I, yeah, I don't think once we get into permitting our, our architectural design that we're done engaging with the community, I think we've set an expectation. We're spending a lot of time on it. I think that you guys can tell that we're spending a lot of time on it because it's really important. And it's part of our, it's part of the way we've approached Dan and I are managing this project is that community engagement is, um, is a, is a cornerstone of the perk. So I, anyway, I don't want to belabor it, but I really appreciate that comment. So thank you. Sure. Thanks. Mike, can you, had... Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Dan, did you want to say something else to that? Otherwise I'll take another question. No, I mean, just real quick, just to reiterate, reiterate Carla says the, the community is going to, you know, help us carry this project and we value their opinion. We value their voice and it's gotta be something that speaks to, uh, their needs and what they want moving forward. And certainly we know what the world looks like today is going to look a lot different a year from now. And uh, so constant community engagement uh, uh, will carry the day for this project here in Bullsville, for sure. Yeah. And I just, if I, I'm sorry, I don't want to belabor it, but we did, we hired a, we just selected our site concept consultant. And one of the reasons that we did was because they are, they specialize. The only thing they do is design municipal recreation and event centers and they're rooted in community community the two-way community engagement and that was actually one of the primary um primary reasons why we selected them who is that carla arc oh okay yeah are you familiar with them yes yeah we just we just told them today <laughs> okay other questions Great presentation. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. Well, All we'll, right. Thanks so much. Thank you for having us and we'll see you in a couple months and come on by the perk community chat. If you feel, if you, if you want to. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. For Thanks that very invite. much. Carla see ya. And Dan. So Mike, I want to hang out for a little bit. So can you put me back into the, I don't want to leave because then I have to leave the whole meeting. Can you put no me back? problem. Okay. Thanks. As that uh, transition happens, we'll move on to item number five, our financial reports. And I saw Mike getting those queued up, but we'll let him focus on getting Dan and Carla moved back to the attendee side. Okay. Done and then and if done. you could take us through the uh, different financial reports. Okay, the first re report is the tax rebate summary, and we have the results for February, which reflect December sales tax. The total is $192,717 and change, uh, almost an 11% increase over last year. And I think that may be the largest single month amount that we have ever received. So that's a good number. Um, debt service, right around $70,000. Our expenses uh, at $20,000. Net 
to cash $102,000 in change. Any questions on that? I've got an explanation for why the ex expenses are as large as they are. Typically, they're down in the teens. Any other questions? This is the profit. No, I was just going to say, are you going to tell us the explanation now that you mentioned it? I'm sorry. Oh, no, I just, you brought up the expenses. I just wanted to make sure you circled back to it. Oh, that's what I'm looking at right now. Um, you'll see two large numbers here. One is up under professional services for $6,000. The other at um, rental space at $3,750. Um, at the beginning of the year, I have to reset the automatic deduction that is done or automatic payments that go to visit Kitsap for both the uh, marketing services that they get paid for at $2,000 a month and our increased rent at $1,200 a month. Um, when those finally got filed, uh, there's typically a two payment gap that comes that's paid in, in September because it's typically paid ahead. Uh, this got in late, so there were actually three months that needed to be uh, covered, uh, December, January, and February. So there were three months included in the $6,000 number and three months included in the rental office space number. So basically that, um, that number is about $10,000 higher than it normally is in the uh, expenses. Everything else is pretty standard. Are there any questions with the uh, financial reports that anybody wanted to ask? Yeah, I, I mean, maybe you have documentation on this somewhere and where we can revisit it in the future. I'd just be curious on uh, what it is we receive out of the $2,000 in marketing for ongoing monthly expense. Well, Visit Kitsap and PFD have worked closely over a period of more than 10 years. And I get lots of advice from Patty. Uh, we have always cooperated on the event fund uh, events of which all were canceled last year, but there was a lot of preparation that happened. Um, Patty works with the facilities uh, she's worked very closely with the conference center in the past on marketing and support to try and make sure we get the, the, the most exposure for people to come and for events to be staged. Um, yes, nothing has been happening at, well, very little has been happening at the conference center. They are beginning to open up for events now and they are booking for events later in the year or into 2022. But typically that's been a cooperative effort between the PFD and Visit Kitsap for marketing the facilities that we fund and in general for marketing the region to the rest of the world. John, one item I'd include on that too, I, I didn't, I don't think I heard you say it, Mike, was for the event funds that uh, we do, those uh, usually go to visit Kitsap and Patty will give them help with what's the best way to market their particular uh, event that they're going to do at the facilities. And one of the events that was funded for last year and uh, it was going to be 
performed this year. They're they're working with the fairgrounds in order to stage that. Is Sonny Saunders and the uh, Sunny events. She'll do a a food truck roundup at the fairgrounds in planned for June. So that's a holdover from last year's event fund activities. The second one that we'd given a smaller amount to was the art gallery down in Bremerton. I just got notification today that they are doing a online um, artists virtual showing an exhibition. Um, so that will be publicized here over the next um, month or two as well. Um, so this is in addition to the expense we show in, in uh, 5499 event support seed money, right? Five, four, nine, nine. Oh, yeah. The. Uh, yeah, we have um, 20,000 a year for that. It's up on the very first page of the financials. Okay. Right there. Five, four, yeah. nine, nine. Yes. So like when you were the, talking about the, uh, the food truck. The seed money, yes, that's the amount that's set aside for event fund. I have to date not received any applications for uh, the June review. Uh, I didn't get any for January. This is still in the budget, hopefully, that we'll get some late bloomers that will come in and, and ask for support. Certainly COVID is a factor uh, for why we're not getting those, uh, but yeah. it's also something where uh, public relations marketing wise, we need to continue to do a better job of making known that there is money that we have available for marketing purposes for people to hold their events and to help get events started at these facilities that will bring in people from outside of Kitsap uh, to come here, spend their money here, stay overnight here. Um, so that's a, a, something that we'll continue to get better at. Noted. In, any other questions? Mike, do you want to take us into that first blanket voucher? Yeah, this is the PFD expenses, the typical ones, legal expenses, my expenses, the uh, notation here about the, the visit kits app, which is uh, auto paid monthly, uh, the one I just discussed, uh, city of Bremerton for BCAT recording as they're doing tonight. And this um, Silverdale Chamber, Chamber of Commerce is their, um, their annual advertising piece that uh, they advertise the area all over the region. Um, and so we typically have an ad in that so that we get di uh, distribution. And that ad typically has information about event fund funding in it. Uh, this year I chose to put in information emphasizing the new facilities that are in the planning stages with funding from the PFD. All right, can I have a motion uh, to uh, approve this blanket voucher? I'll move. So, so motioned. Thank you, Phil. Take John's as a second. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 
Any opposed? Nay. All right. The second one uh, for our, our voucher is a project voucher uh, for the Paul's Boat Perk. If uh, I can have a motion for that. I'll move to approve. Thank you, Aaron. And a second. I'll second. A second. Thank you, Phil. We'll go with Phil on that. And uh, Mike, is there anything that you want to mention in regards to this uh, for discussion, what it covers? Um, no, this is um, it, one in a series, <clears throat> and it basically covers the expenses that uh, Carla outlined for the Peter Batuello and his folks that are doing a lot of the community outreach. And uh, this will pick up some more as they start into the planning with the other consultants that they're hiring. All right, well, thank you. Any other discussion? All right, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Okay, project voucher passes uh, approval. Uh, for item number six, new business, uh, our search for a new executive director. Um, we have begun that process and the last time uh, that uh, we spoke as a board, um, we um, uh, knew that the county was uh, going to help us with human resources and so uh, they've been very good about that. We are very appreciative of that, uh, but we are uh, we've hit a bit of a delay uh, simply because um, once uh, they began to do that, the question came up uh, that we should really have an ILA uh, to uh, make that known to the public and to do that the appropriate way. And so that is uh, where we're at um, is that we are just waiting. Uh, on getting the right wording for that ILA and getting that completed. Um, I would imagine that we would have another uh, special meeting at some point in the next month when that ILA has been completed and has been agreed upon for the county and uh, our legal counsel, uh, Brian. Um, and then we would move forward from that point. So just to update on where we're at uh, regarding that. Um, number seven, ongoing business, uh, the ED activity report and the regional facilities report. Um, I'd like to just direct your attention to those to read on your own and then bring us into number eight, uh, which is our executive session on our agenda for tonight. Um, so at this point, uh, the board is going into executive session as authorized by RCW 42.30.110, uh, 1G, to evaluate the performance of a public employee. Uh, the executive session will end at 6.30, or excuse me, uh, let me, <laughs> let me uh, look at what time it is, uh, 6.19. So uh, the executive session will end at 6.45 p.m., at 6.45 p.m. we will return. Uh, so at this point, uh, board members, you've received another email uh, from John with a second uh, link uh, to join. So we will exit here, leave the meeting. Uh, Mike will remain uh, and keep the meeting open and uh, we will see you in executive session. Hiya, Darren. Hi, Mike. Um, just wanted to give uh, the announcement that we will extend the executive session by 15 minutes. So we expect to be back here at 7 p.m. All right. Thank you. Yep. Everybody coming back, Aaron? Yep. Okay. Let's how fast we are. Aaron's All right, seven. who was who the fastest, Aaron, Aaron or Phil? Aaron. I was second. It's impressive, Aaron. Should have a, 
Yeah. You know, some kind of a pool or something. <laughs> Everybody but Brian. It's always the lawyers. <laughs> There he is. All right. Well, we thank you, everybody, for sticking with us uh, as we went through the executive session. Um, uh, but at this point in time, uh, we're going to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>